She won most talkative in high school, and she has been running her mouth ever since. Welcome to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast with your host, Lisa Fisher. Okay, so you're the platinum Demi Moore, right? Because we don't say gray. Have you seen her recently? She looks incredible, so I take that as a huge compliment. I saw a doctor yesterday on social media go through, because she's my age, I'm 61. That's exactly what I saw. Yes, that was amazing. It's impressive because it, he said, I'm not her plastic surgeon, though I'd love yeah. to be, I'd love yeah. to take credit is what he said. And he yeah. went through all the things that she's had done because she obviously colors her hair, which guilty as charged, me too. I would have some gray hair, but not a lot. But she, because of my coloring and her coloring, your coloring, she probably has some gray hair. So she doesn't have the gray hair. She's had a facelift or what he was speculating. Yeah. Facelift, upper bluff, lower bluff, laser treatments. I mean, all the things. And she is amazing. But anytime anyone sees your picture, I've shown your picture, they go, well, it looks like Demi Moore. So I guess you've heard that for years, but you've let your, your hair grow go natural and she has not. Yeah, but... I think she looks a million dollars. I mean, she may have spent a million dollars. She but has I, spent. That's right. Yes, but that's fine. Agreed. If I had a million dollars and I could look like that, <laughs> right. I would. Right. I think she looks fabulous, and yeah. uh, and I've only been told since my hair's long that oh. I don't like it anymore. So, well, let's talk about the genesis of you being discovered in your fifties as a model, and then, I mean, making. You're a trailblazer for women to encourage them that life's not over at 50 something and and tell that story because it's so inspiring, Caroline. Well, I definitely went through the period of feeling lost and feeling like I no longer mattered. I'd Mm -hmm. I'd reached that age where it was sort of downhill and let the younger generation take Mm -hmm. on and then I was offered this incredible job out of the blue modeling, which I had never done before. And I got the job. I felt like the queen for the day and thought, my, that there's more to life. Maybe I could do this again. I love this. And it was so empowering. And, and so I made that choice. And that is the difference, isn't it? Uh, you yeah. get to a certain age, certain age and you either give in to those feelings or you take off on a, on a new journey. And it's finding out what that new journey is, isn't it? So you're a Londoner living in Dubai. Correct. Um, in London, did you model then in your 20s and 30s? Never. No. Uh, seriously? Never. Why? <laughs> Um, because I I was a debutante and I remember there's a there's a person called Trini. Have you come across Trini? Yes. She has a yes. makeup line. Yes, I so love she her. She was a debutante the same year as me and she turned up and she was wearing a mini skirt and she had a spray tan or whatever it was, but she <laughs> right. looked fantastic. And I was there with my Laura Ashley, you know, my loafers from Russell and Bromley, <laughs> my Laura Ashley frilly shirt. Yes. And my skirt, you know, mid calf. And I, that's the way I was brought up. Modest. Yeah. But I wanted to be Trini. <laughs> that's funny. So do you keep up with her now? I've seen her a few times. I've been back, uh, done a little work for Trini. And I mean, she's just a ball of energy, isn't she? Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. She's yeah, I, very compelling. You want to watch her. Um, yeah. well, I'm, I'll I'm have, not sure she would recognize me in the street, but she is very recognizable. Yeah. She, she has neat eyes um, that are very expressive and she's very expressive. Mm-hmm. And so she, her influence is then for makeup, right? And fashion. Uh, yes, big, big fashion. Yeah, she had okay. a TV show. Okay. In mm. in the UK, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so so tell your story, because you, like me, have had a long marriage. And so that meant you were married in your 20s, you had your babies. So what was your life like? Like, I mean, I just want to hear what a supermodel's life was like before she was a supermodel. 
Well, I don't consider myself a supermodel. I'm a supermodel, I think, is somebody who's who started at the year dot and went the right it all the way It fits through, the but, definition to me. But thank you. I followed my husband. I was brought up. I was groomed in a positive way, and it always has negative connotations, but uh, by my parents and yes. then by my husband. He was in the military, so again, it was another kind of grooming. And I was taught to not walk behind him because I had to, but just he it was his job. He was the one in charge, and I was the wife of, and I had a number. And I uh, had two children, IVF, one made in Ottawa, and the other one made in Delhi in India. Is that right? Yes. So you were having infertility. Bef- I mean, that was kind of early in the game of IVF, I would think. It, was that well, the 90s? Right. So it was 20. I oh, know we married in 91. And okay. uh, Max is now 29. He's 30 this year. So okay. 30 yeah. Years. yeah. All right. Yeah. So we're incredibly lucky to have a boy and a girl. We had five IVFs. Is that um, right? Did you have a diagnosis that you share? Like, did you have polycystic ovarian syndrome or just infertility? Didn't know? No, I had ovarian cysts. And back in those days, they used to operate uh, yeah. and they used to, they used to remove them. So I had quite a lot of scar tissue. Oh. And I think it was the scar tissue that, that stopped. So then I had two ectopics. And wow. And they decided to sterilize me after that. Wow. So the ectopic, the, that, is, that can be deadly for yeah. the yeah. mom yeah luckily it wasn't um yeah. we found out both times around eight to ten weeks so yeah so you had, bump, you had a bumpy you had a bumpy ride to- yeah you had a bumpy ride getting to the mm-hmm. point where you gave birth to your glorious children yeah but i always believed i would have babies always and it was you just did. the one ivf didn't work okay when are we going to do the next one because I know I'm going to have children and that's how we went at it. So was that difficult on your marriage or on you? I'm sure it was difficult. It was difficult on both of us. Mentally, it is difficult, but, um, and the money side of it, luckily being in the military, we did have um, some aid. Um, But no more difficult than other people have issues in their marriage. I, I can't remember any turmoil as far as marriage, because there was always going to be a baby. You know, mm-hmm. So it was, you know, this is really bad right now, but it'll be okay. Where did your military travels take you? Did you start in London? Uh, we didn't. We started in Germany. And oh. uh, we, yeah, we were so Germany and then India and... Canada, America, um, Germany again, bit of England. Yeah. And now okay. Dubai. Tell me about living as a, I mean, you're Westerner to them, you know, living in Dubai because it does not follow traditional Arab or Islamic dress code as it does, you know, as it in other Arab Arabic or Islamic countries. So tell me what it's like. It, it's like London there, right? We feel incredibly lucky to live here. Really, uh, we say that most days. Where the weather right now is just outstanding. We've got the doors open and it's just amazing. And every day we think, oh, tomorrow it might start hotting up because at some stage it's going to hit 50 again and plus 50. So the summer's takes and getting through, but we've got dogs. Um, but otherwise, we are so, so lucky. We have a great life. There's n- next to no crime. Uh, I can leave my car outside running what? all day. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I can go to a shop. If it's 50 degrees and I need to run in and get a, a bottle of water, I will literally stop my car, leave it running, run into the store, get the water and come out. Yeah, not like the rest of the world. No. Um, Because you're in the middle of the desert and 50 degrees centigrade is probably a jillion in Fahrenheit. I can't can't (laughs) even imagine. At least a jillion. Yeah, Yeah. it's at least a jillion. And it's the desert, so it's really hot. Well, it gets hotter in the desert. We're by the sea. 
So it's oh. not, we, you know, we get a breeze at a certain, you know, in the morning. Uh, uh, no, it comes in in the afternoon, I think. Um, but not always. And, this, and, the, and then the sand's caught up in the breeze. Yeah, yeah. It's, we've been here for 14 years and it's changed. It's so much more relaxed that for Ramadan, there were no coffee shops open. Okay. And you know, yeah. when there's not a coffee shop open, so I need to, I need a drink now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need a drink now, but all the coffee shops are closed. So now I need a drink. Um, and now everything's open and it just is easy. Are um, the women who are native there, are they wearing the hijab and they're covered? They're completely covered. So you're not, and that's not uncomfortable or it's it's not a crime like it would be. We are could the be majority. Another... Expats are the majority here. And oh. also, as a great generalization, their families come out in the evenings. They're more likely, you know, the malls are, are much busier in the evening. They all go to the malls in the evening. I like to go to the mall early in the morning because it's quieter and then get out. But... There are communities, uh, you know, as there are all over the world, really. And uh, I've got local friends. They don't cover up completely. They just cover their heads. Oh, got it. Um, and they're, they're all beautiful. Yes. The, the, yes. the eyelashes, yes. the eyes. The, yes. Yeah. Yeah, they, beautiful, they look beautiful. After themselves. Yeah, beautiful women. Um, what's the population there? <clears throat> oh, you're asking me. I'd have to Google that. I can ask Siri. Siri. Hey, Siri, what's the population of Dubai? As of 2023, the population of Dubai was 3,546,000, 3, 64,000. Yeah. That's a big city. Because think about it. This was just carved out of the desert however many years ago. You know. I know. It's I know. And I, the other thing, you know, in England, you I listen to English radio every day. And it'll be the potholes are really bad. Uh, we're going to fix the potholes by 2026. And here they will move Shakeside Road, which is a, what a seven lane highway each way. They'll move it over pretty much overnight. I mean, it just, <laughs> you want a job done, it's done. So what what is the key that their infrastructure being so efficient? Well, it's the money, it's the wealth. It's the money, but it's also not having to go through legal systems. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I you mean, want something done and you're in charge, yes. you get it done. And that there's got to be some positives to that. Instead of people yes. arguing about whether it should be done this year, next yes. year, in 10 years' time. Yes. Yes. We have a lot of, in the U.S., we have a lot of red tape, government yeah. red tape. And in fact, our government... Uh, ours in the U.S., maybe in the U.K. too, is known for its wastefulness. Thirty years ago, there was the hammer that was in Washington. It was seven hundred fifty dollars, where you could go to the Home Depot and get one for nineteen dollars. So it, it, there's just so much waste in government spending that maybe they're just more efficient. I don't. Well, also they're very good at the, if they if they make a mistake. They change things overnight too. So wow. everything is just, everything just happens. Now, I'm sorry it's, I don't know this, but mm -hmm. is Dubai a democracy? Are you able to vote in elections? No, 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 no. Okay. No, it's auto is it autocracy? Oh, autocracy. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, are you able to vote as, a, as an expat? No, so autocracy, you don't, but oh, you mean in England? Yeah, yeah. So are you still voting in England? No. Okay. So no. that that must be weird to live in a place that you, because that is one thing about, now we don't have a true democracy. I forget if they call it republic. Or, there's some term oh. that's really used for the U.S., but we're able to vote for our leaders. I, it would be odd to me to live someplace that I had no say. Yeah, even though my even say if is you have a say, it doesn't mean say anyone's going to do it. You're I right. Mean, really, we vote for, I voted for Boris back then. Yes. Thinking he'd come in and he'd have some guts and he'd do some things. Well, he came in and he just melted. He didn't Wasn't do that it. disappointing? So disappointing. 
But you see, he couldn't. Yeah. Do, it, he, the prime minister, is not in charge. No, he can say what he wants to happen, yeah. but then he's got all the red Parliament. tape around him. Yeah, it, it's like so, our our president here and our Congress, and they get in gridlock. And you know, yes. we have two houses of Congress, and if if it leans to one direction, and the the elected leader is another. I mean, it, it's a mess. I mean, we're it's a we're in a, we're in an election year too in the U.S., so it's it's really a mess. I know. I'm listening to it. I'm listening to it on the radio. Also, it's it is a complete mess, and so I cannot help but feel for. I get messages from people saying, "Oh, but this goes on in your country. This goes on in your country." You don't dig into those things because it's none of your business. You would be deported if you did. Yeah. So you just live yeah. a good life and you get on with your good life. Yeah. And you, you don't break the rules because right. you know there's going to be trouble. So I would assume there are no women in charge at all in Dubai. There are no women elected officials. They're, they're, they're trying to change it, actually. They're, they've brought women in um, at the top of some companies. Oh. They are trying to change things. Uh, does the UK have a presence there then in military? Is that what brought you then to Dubai? David was an advisor. Oh, an advisor. Yeah. And what languages do they speak there? Um, Emirati. Oh. Um, yeah, they speak um, Arabic. Okay. And it's an Arabic language. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's such mystery to me behind Dubai because, again, it was in the middle of a desert now. Don't don't you even have snow skiing in Dubai? Oh yes, we do, and we've just got a new treadmill um, skiing place, so you can keep continually skiing on this huge treadmill. You, people say, "Oh, Dubai's boring because it's all new and there's nothing to see." No. It is the most exciting place, and the no. food. We went to Paris at the end of last year, Mimi, my daughter, and I. We were in um, a fashion show at Paris Fashion Week. And seriously, the food here is the best in the world. We are so lucky. Wow. Um, and so going anywhere else really is, doesn't quite match up to it. Yeah, no, it, it's shiny for sure and sparkly. It's very and, shiny, yeah. very yeah. sparkly, yes. Yeah, if it weren't so far, it's there are so many places I still, you know, and I'd love to go to Israel as th soon as things calm down there and some other places. So I've never made it quite that far, but it's You're gonna definitely, have to do it. yeah, it's a bucket list thing for sure. Yeah. And, and people who go again, there are casinos and, um, snow skiing in the middle of yeah, this we desert. We don't have casinos. There's no gambling allowed. Oh, no, here. no, that's right. It's not casinos. It was something else that was drawing some Americans there for a while. Yeah. I should have known better and said that. But it was something that took them there. And I remember they traveled, came back and said, you've never seen anything like it. They said it's really hard to even describe. It's the Emerald City of Oz. When when Dorothy, you know, after the, the house lands on, you know, the Wicked Witch, and we know the munchkins are there and it's shiny and sparkly, it is the Emerald City of Oz. So whatever they've done, they've done, they're doing a good job. They are, now, they are doing a good job, yeah. Okay, let's talk about um so you're you're this mom, um, you're traveling all over the world. Where in the US did you live? Uh Florida. Okay. Well that's that was hot very weather. short. That was yeah, that was quite a, a short um uh, short one. Canada was ten months and we drove uh we were in uh near Kingston, Gagetown, and we drove all the way down to Key West for oh Christmas. Oh my god. Uh, you know, airplanes go there. You could have flown. <laughs> I know, but we wanted to see the state. Well, and yeah, at, at that time, it was only two of us. So it was. Well, it was that just, is actually that would be the way my husband would do it, because it is great to see the country, any country, wherever you are by car. And he always says we miss things when we fly. So I could see doing that. But that's a long trip. That was five or six yeah. days. But also it was it was exciting because um you you had places to stop all the way down and that doesn't happen in every other country. So where's we're gonna 
stop and we can get lunch there yeah, and then we go to that true. outlet mall there and yeah it was great it was a, a great memories of that trip okay so you've lived in uh you lived in india yes now what's that like that was i was terrified of going there max was six months and i was thinking well what happens if if he gets sick and i can't yeah. have another baby and yeah. Maybe I should just come and visit you when you're there, being David. And I just, I mean, I was bottle feeding, um, bought all the formula and we shipped ourselves off there. And it was actually one of the best years ever. The really? Indian people were fantastic. Max would crawl onto a cricket pitch and all the kids would stop playing and they start right? rolling the ball for him. Yeah. It was a really, really good year. A kind group of people. Oh, in so India. kind. Mm -hmm. So kind. Okay. Now, some of my, the best Indian food I've ever had has been in London. So you are in India and in Paris. Paris has amazing Indian food too, but yeah. you were there in the middle of it. What was your favorite? <laughs> Uh, I actually, I was sick for the whole time I was there. Oh. I had, um, um, oh, what's it called? Um, when you, uh, do you get from chicken from uncooked chicken? Salmonella. Salmonella. Yeah. I had salmonella for the whole time I was there and I came back and, uh, I weighed six stone i don't know what that is but i'm eight stone now so that's 14 pounds oh uh, no 28 okay. pounds more now than i did in okay India. and you're really slim now so was, you were a skeleton i i was and i came back and i went to the doctor and they ended up sending some health officers round to mum's house and saying we need to check your kitchen because <laughs> you've had salmonella reported <laughs> so did you get it from the your kitchen in India then? Probably not from my kitchen actually, because it in because I was had an upset stomach for most of the time. I would take food from our kitchen uh, because I trusted our cooks. So I would they bake biscuits or a cake or something, and I would take it on trips with me. Now, were you in northern India or the south? South. Near so, that's, yeah, so, that's, so they're known for their fish dishes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not a big fishy eater. Um, I mean, it, it more than likely it would be food having been left out too long. Okay. But, okay. you know, who knows? It, whenever we went out, I would be sick. Um, oh, wow. Uh, but David ate uh, live yogurt every morning. They would, the, they would grow it. And wow. he was never sick. Now, um, did you miss beef at all being in India? Oh, we ate beef. Oh, they do have beef then? Yeah, yeah. It would it's different religions do different oh, things. So Hindu and they were Christian. Okay. Yeah, well that's true. I didn't know they would accommodate they they would make that accommodation, so that's good to know. We can buy pork here. You can? Yes, they have pork shops. So then they do accommodate yeah. different religions and Westerners. I say Westerners just because yes. I'm making the group of people from Europe to the U.S. that would have yeah. different food restrictions and religious requirements. So then yes. during, so you're saying even during Ramadan then, there are, are businesses open? Are there Everything restaurants open now? Because okay. Dubai is tourism, and oh. you can't. The bigger into it they got, they realized that they couldn't just yeah cut their nose off to spite their face, so to yeah. speak. Um, and and that's the whole learning process. Dubai learns and it yeah. acts. See, that's what we miss in this country <laughs> and in the UK yeah. is the the learning process, and then moving on from that and saying let's regroup. Let's try something else. Yes. Because in the U.S. now, we're seeing cities that are crumbling and their tourism is crumbling because of political, because of politics. 
Mm. You know, San Francisco here, which was an amazing city, it, you know, much of it is in shambles and their businesses are boarded up and there's no CVS or Target or anything in certain downtown areas. Seattle, same thing. At, at part, parts of LA, it, it's a mess. And no one, yeah. that's what I wonder. Why isn't anyone learning? Exactly. Why aren't they learning? I, I don't because understand. nobody wants to take nobody wants to take responsibility for making the decisions, and no one person can take responsibility. So even during COVID, why didn't why didn't all the countries talk to each other instead of all doing their own thing? Yeah, I I, I don't understand that. There was a country in Africa that I can't remember which one but said that they didn't even recognize COVID. Like the prime minister, whoever was in charge, I can't remember which country it was, said, no, we're not, we're not doing it. We're not playing the game. We're not doing COVID. Yeah, yeah, we're not doing it. And, yeah. and you know what? They, I mean, of course, we're talking a, a, a different financial structure than in the, or GDP than the U.S. or the U.K. Mm. But mm. I just remember thinking that's the way you do it. And yeah. there, I think in Hungary, in uh, Europe, their prime minister has said sometimes on things going, no, we're not, we're not doing that. Yeah. And uh, they, Dubai, they looked after the, D- Dubai looked after the country. It did not look after the people. People were evicted. You know, shit happened. Yeah. But they looked after the country and it came out of COVID strong. And wow. every other country that looked after the people and just gave money to people and did yeah. what people wanted them to do is in a complete mess now but on another but on another tack you look fabulous well thank you as do you and you, how- you're, you're actually can may i just say your skin looks absolutely fantastic thank you thank you i like you have worked hard for my skin i do i do skin. take i've always taken real good care of my skin just i you know i've never smoked and i've really eliminated all alcohol I've lost all interest in it and alcohol besides being a class one carcinogen. I was, I learned the other day, it is so inflammatory to our skin that after we drink, it really takes us a few days for our skin to clear up for it, us to metabolize it out of our bodies. And so I, I feel like that has something to do because people do ask me often now, you know, what's your secret? Even when yeah. I travel, they'll say, Oh my gosh, your skin. Cause they know I'm not, obviously in my twenties, thirties or forties that I'm an older woman, but I, and you do too, you take care of your skin. So what are your secrets? Well, we can have the best skin. I have better skin yeah. now than I used to have. Is that I right? Used to be in the sun and yeah. I'm, I look after it a lot better now uh, than I used to. That's the whole thing about being our age is that yeah. we can reinvent ourselves and yes. do all sorts of things that we either didn't have time to do or maybe couldn't afford to and it's a little bit easier now than it used to be and we can the world is our oyster right now i agree and i also agree that we were given information in the 80s and 90s that we now know we call we'll say that was a lie it was erroneous information going low fat was one of the worst things you could do for your skin cuz your skin needs mm. fat you need mm. collagen you know you need healthy nutritious foods you and i know you have this philosophy don't eat foods out of boxes we talked about this when i did your live with you on instagram it's the yeah. dr bickman philosophy of avoiding foods in boxes and bags with barcodes because those highly ultra processed foods actually affect your skin Inflammation yeah. is shown throughout the body, and our skin is a barometer of that. So I think part of it is inform- that kind of information. But also for me, so I avoided the sun for years, and now I regret it because my vitamin D levels were low. And so now I work hard to get my vitamin D levels up, but I only do it, I do 20 minutes a day with no sunscreen to wow. keep my vitamin D up. Um because that affects your health, longevity. I mean, on and on and on. Yeah. Um, but I'm not getting a tan, obviously. I mean, my skin yeah. is white, you know, porcelain. And I'm not getting a sunburn. Those are two, th- a, a slight tan wouldn't bother somebody, but I just don't. I'm doing it for the vitamin D. Yes. So, 
you know, that's information. There are just a lot of things we were told not to do. Remember, we were drinking skim milk in the 80s and 90s. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was the only way to move forward. Yeah, it was the only way to move forward. So mm-hmm. what are some things you've done that you've tweaked that maybe you've restored in your diet that you would have thought, oh, I would have never done that, and you feel better now doing it? I haven't tweaked it that much in that I'm eating differently. I've been low carb for many, many years. Uh, but now, even when I'm buying cheese, I'm, look, I'm looking at the ingredients of things. And if I'm buying cheddar, how many ingredients does it have? Mm-hmm. Does it have preservatives? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm having to spend more, but yes. I feel much better better and that I'm buying Stilton and Brie and a Mm -hmm. good cheddar and uh, making my own tomato sauce instead of buying jars of it. Just looking at the I mean, I have to have my glasses for everything and the the writing on those packets is so so small. small. Uh, Yeah, just and trying not to buy anything with any of the dextrose any of the ooze on the end okay now there's one thing that the uk offers that is liquid gold and it is the the milks cheeses the dairy the butter yes so you're not getting that because there are local farms probably that were accessible to you when you lived in london that you're not getting in dubai we get we use pretty much everything comes from other countries yeah we have local vegetables, uh, but they tend to be a lot smaller and different. Uh, so it depends whether you want. So you can get a chicken here, but it's literally it's literally about that big. And then they'll sell a chicken breast. It'll be about this big. And they think, well, where did those chicken breasts come from? If the chickens are only that big and the chicken breasts are as big as the whole chickens. Yeah. So I'm now kind of going off chicken also. I like to buy animals that had a life. So I'm having to you know, try and go backtrack and find out where the meat came from that we're eating. Yeah. But everything, you know, American meat, New Zealand meat, Australian, all over the world. Well, our pesticide use in the U.S. is just off the charts. And that's why they're saying that gluten bothers 98% of the people, not that they have a gluten sensitivity, they have a glyphosate sensitivity. It's the yeah. poisons. So yeah. in Dubai, in a desert, okay. They don't this, grow any of that stuff. Right. So you're, if you are getting it from other countries, I'm wondering about the pesticide use. In Europe, the pesticide use, I think, is banned. I think glyphosate is banned in Europe. I don't know. I, I think that's right. And I think that's one thing. That's why people will say from the U.S., they'll travel to Italy and the pasta doesn't bother them. The wine doesn't bother them. And it, and I th- think that the majority of people will agree that that's because there is no pesticide use and the pesticides is what gives us leaky gut and some other things. Is, is functional medicine um, a thing there like it is now in the U.S. and in Europe where we're looking at root cause? Is that something that people are interested in in Dubai? It is. A, a lot of places are opening up and doing longevity. Yeah. We've got saunas and the cold, you know, the ice baths. Have you done the cold plunge yet? I have, yes. What's that like? I've done a couple I wouldn't bring it into my daily life. Yeah. I I can do it. I've done it, but I don't know. I just, I don't get, I mean, I do get that it's good for you. I know that yes, it's good for right. you. And I tried, I turned my shower onto the cold. Um, actually, yesterday when I had a shower and it actually wasn't very cold. But um, that's as far as I would go. Just the cold hitting your chest it's supposed to hit your chest yeah i've done um one time i had a big tv shoot and i was out of town i didn't have all my stuff with me so i was in a hotel i got the ice bucket 
and I filled it up with ice water and I did my facial plunge in that. They say do 20 seconds at a time. I pull my head up and I'm telling you, it brightened my skin. It's something that I probably need to do. I mean, it, think about what it does to your vascular system because you know what the cold plunge does, yeah. but it would do the same thing. Sometimes we just want the puffiness away from under eyes or yeah. uh, our skin to be glowing. And that um, I've done that just a couple of times, but that's the most. I have not, I, and I'll, I do all the other things. I do long fast. I a lot of things. The cold plunge is the one thing that I go, I, I, mm. I just want to pass. Yeah. It's the breathing. It's, uh, it's the breathing. Yeah. Trying to get that under control. And I kind of feel like I've been there and done it and I don't need to do it again. Yeah. I, that's how, that's probably how I'd feel. Now we have hot summers in Arkansas and nothing obviously like what you have, but we do have hot, humid summers. So after I've worked out in the summer, I will come in then and do a cold shower and have no problem with it. But we are having our winter now and I'm not interested. I know people do it and I'm so proud of you people who do it. I know. I know. I, I've got friends who do it. I love it. Like Peter Atia and those other longevity experts say that, you know, it's best for mobilizing your brown fat and it's help helps your mitochondria. I'm like my brown fat and mitochondria just may not be moving then on this one. I'll have to find something else. Now, um, you and I talked and we talked about intermittent fasting and because you have been low carb, uh, for a long time, have yeah. you delved into intermittent fasting now? I have. And that would be, um, finishing eating at about, uh, seven thirty, seven seven thirty, and then not eating until, about 11, 12, one or two oh, the next day, depending that's, that's on That's good. Yeah. yeah. But then I go through phases of just needing my coconut latte at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So then I'll go through that phase. But I th it is good to, to muck around with the fasting, I think, and not do it regimented. Speed. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. There, there's a talk that the body gets accustomed to the same window every day and to mix yeah. things up. Yeah. And that, you know, when you are metabolically flexible, which is what happens when you do fasting for over a period of time, the body moves in and out of fat burning. And Mindy Pels talks about that fat burning and sugar burning, uh, which is so fascinating. And that's why it's good to mix things up. So sometimes on weekends, I do a longer eating windows. And today is my long fast. I'm doing a 42 hour fast every week from I put my fork down on Tuesday night and then I don't eat again until Thursday um, at about noon. But yesterday on Tuesday, it was our 36th wedding anniversary and we took our family out. And so I ate two really good meals and even had a snack, which I don't, I never eat that much, but it's kind of, it's like I'm getting ready to hibernate. You know, yeah. my body knew and I told my body we're fasting for 42 yeah. hours. So probably that's it. And then on Thursday, when I eat, I'll probably have two small meals. You know, I just, I come in and out of that and I do what works for me. And this is what I tell yes. my clients. Cause I am a health coach. I'll, I say this all the time. It's your life. Live it. You know, mm. If, mm. if your daughter's getting married Saturday and there's brunch and then there's dinner and then there's cocktails after that, enjoy it. Yes. Do not sit back and miss something because you had some regimented fasting. You know, yeah. enjoy your life. So okay. you started, you low carb kind of before anybody. Do you think that's what's helped you keep a slim figure through? I never liked breakfast. I, even at oh. school, I didn't yeah. want breakfast before I went to school. And, and now we're finding out that actually we don't need breakfast. No. Um, so I guess I, I just went with my, with my gut feeling yeah. and, and I've stuck with that. Listen to your body. I mean to say on the, on a Sunday, if David cooks bacon for breakfast, then I'm in. Absolutely. In with that. Totally. That's right. Cause you're living your life. Okay. Let's <laughs> go back. Let's wrap things up. We have about four or five minutes left, but I want to hear your story. Um, I think, is it that your daughter worked for a firm in London and they saw a picture of you and said, who's that? And they grabbed you as a model. They were looking for a gray model and they had contacted Maya Musk 
and she had a few too many zeros on her on her invoice and um so they were looking somebody a bit cheaper and <laughs> they saw a picture of me me showed them a picture of me and said my mum's great and uh they said oh well we want to meet her so they flew me to london and they liked me and it was incredible just i incredible. mean it breathed new life into you i mean it did and where did i where did i think that i could do that i, I still look back and think how did you think that you could stand there in front of a camera for a vogue and I know. How did I think I could? But I just knew I could. I just, just I don't know. I just knew it was weird. So you've done British Vogue. What are some of the other magazines you've done? Um, Vogue Arabia, um, uh, Tatler in England, Harper's Bazaar here, Harper's Bazaar wow. in England. Oh my yeah, gosh. So and you want the American ones under my belt. Okay, well, this could be <laughs> this you could get discovered right here on the Lisa Fisher you said podcast. Yes. Um Puts you walk the, That's right. And mm -hmm. you walked the catwalk too, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, we did Paris. Mimi and I did Paris last week. Uh last uh, sorry, last season. Um and yes, we've done Arab Fashion Week here. And yeah, uh, just I, I, that that does make me nervous, but uh, more so than standing in front of the camera. Yeah, because that that's a performance. <laughs> it is, and you're being taken from every angle. And do you do swimwear too? I do. Wow! My goodness. I do. Um, I'd have to. I'd have to. So if I was doing it now, I, I'd have to think about my poses. Do you think about your diet the few days before you do swimwear? I probably would do more cardio classes. Um, and I probably would eat less, honestly, yes. Yeah. I would. Because yeah. I just want to just be a little bit flatter, tummy. Yeah. Sure. Um, I mean, you want to put your best self forward, don't you? Yeah. But that definitely is. there are ways that I could not stand face on. <laughs> I, I would not be happy with those pictures. I couldn't wow. just stand there and do that. So it would have so, to be a bit of a, a side angle. Yeah. And, so intimidating. So what do you do to keep your hair in its beautiful minted gray condition? What do you do this the purple shampoo? I do and then I notice um in a photograph uh that I have this sort of purple patch going on back here <laughs> because um it really it it sticks uh if it's in for too long. And obviously I left it in back here a little bit too long and I did catch a little purple glimmer. That's great. Yeah. That's and great. But otherwise, uh, a good, I like, I try not to wash it too often. Yeah. Isn't that the great thing about aging is that we, you know, every, I'm about every five or six days, I've got thick Perfect. coarse hair. So. Yeah. Well, there's no point mucking around with your hair, is it? it it's no. precious. At, yeah, at mean, our age we yeah. want to keep it there and keep it healthy for as long as possible so leave yeah. it alone and what have you done with uh hormone replacement therapy do you do bioidentical i absolutely do i very pro it's a game changer I, I have a list on my on my um in my highlights there's a an m and there's a list of menopause specialists from all over the world good on that uh, it, it's so important to find a doctor who is going to give you all of the information and not just a one-sided bit of information. Which is also one of my, when people ask me about my skin, I say I do bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. So I do have the skin from when I was cycling and our, and you know, there's a time in our, our period when we were cycling that 
the balance, the right balance of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone gave us youthful skin. I mean, youthful skin is part of that. So, um, I had I no problem. I stopped with the testosterone because I started getting a few whiskers. Well, I did two in the pellet, so I have the transdermal that I use, and I take a spironolactone, which um, is an androgen suppressant, and that stopped the facial hair. So I had facial hair and acne and oily skin when I was doing the pellet. And in fact, my provider asked me yesterday if I wanted to go back to the pellet because she said, you're tolerating the transdermal. And I said, I don't want to upset the apple cart. I like the way it is. I don't have, I don't have the facial hair. Um, I don't have the acne. And I think the combination for me, this is not medical advice, but the spironolactone Mm -hmm. Um, with the transdermal that I have, and even He's the working. transdermal, they can add estrogen, estradiol to it. Because sometimes women who take a pellet, and Dr. Mary Claire Haver told me that still need some vaginal estrogen or transdermal estrogen. So it's again, it's finding a provider who speaks this language, yes. who wants you to soar and feel your best. And so, absolutely, absolutely, it's the most important thing to get all of the information instead of going in with half of it. That's right. And it makes you, I, I feel better. I, I mean, I just feel great. I feel like I definitely feel like I did in my twenties and thirties. And the beauty is I don't have a period anymore. That having a period, that's hard work on you. And you know, Suzanne um, Summers, one of her things was she kept menstruating through the years. She wanted to keep menstruating because she wanted to keep her body in that condition. And that is one thing I do not miss. So I'm sorry for you women who are still having a period. That's rough. And, and I know, I mean, kids, when they're getting, they're having their periods so young these days, you did like an 11 year old or a 10 year old. Oh, I know. I know. And that they say does put you at a higher risk for cancers. I, I don't know. I mean, that was always the philosophy. So again, yeah. we go back to foods. Yeah lack of sunlight. I mean, you need all the things. If God made it, eat it, use it, get, get sunlight every day. Caroline, you're so inspiring. Absolutely. Thank you so much for doing this at five o'clock in the evening for you, 7 a.m. for me um, in order you. to work our schedule. And I will put all the information about you in show notes. You're definitely, you know, one of the most influential people I've ever talked to and so inspiring. And we thank you. You're Lisa Fisher said time. podcast community. Thanks you. Thank you, Lisa. Great job. Thanks for listening to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe and download all the episodes and leave a review, won't you? The Lisa Fisher Said Podcast is produced by ClantonCreative.com.